Hello and welcome to Engineering Deathmatch. We are here on day two of Cisco Live and we're filming our second Engineering Deathmatch here utilizing the Cisco Spark Board. We've got a, a couple of really skilled engineers to bring up on, on board here to talk about what they're going to do. So first, let's, let's meet Sankar Nair. Come on up. So uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. So I'm a uh, solution architect for CDW, and uh, I've been in this industry for 15 years. Um, I have been doing a lot of Spark programming in the last uh, couple of years, uh, built a few bots. Uh, um, big fan of uh, Spark. I'm a Spark ambassador myself, and uh, looking forward to what uh, is coming in this uh, deathmatch. Sounds good. So you really don't have a whole lot of idea what's coming for you. Did you do anything to prepare, or you're just kind of winging it? Just had a few extra beers, that's all. <laughs> that works for me. Up next, we've got Josh Anderson. Come on up, Josh. So tell me a little bit about yourself, Josh. I'm a systems engineer for Cisco Systems. Uh, I cover uh, commercial territory customers kind of in the Midwest area and uh, been doing all kinds of things with programmability for a while. Um, just kind of started with call manager back in the day, um, done some basic route switch data center, um, wrote a couple of Spark bots, so kind of a wide variety of uh, things around programmability. So. so working for Cisco, is that going to give you an edge or is it uh, anybody's game? I think it's anybody's game. All right. So are you guys ready to hear our challenge? Come on up here. Uh, you guys ready to hear it? All right. So. So if, if I was really honest, I would, I, would, I would have to tell you that Boxsmith is the only producer of apparel and accessories for chickens. Looking for that perfect cardin, cardigan for your chicken flock? Look no further. Want a custom fitted chicken sized tiara? You might need a little help, but they can help you out with that too. Boxsmith has recently started using Cisco Spark and has realized the power of the platform to link multiple systems together and provide communications to their organization. They would like you to design a bot that will help them check inventory levels, uh, add items to a shopping list so that they can replenish inventory. Does that make sense? All right, sounds good. Well, let's get started. This episode is sponsored by Cisco Spark. To learn more about how Cisco Spark enables team collaboration, including messaging, whiteboarding, video, and more, go to ciscospark.com. All whiteboard drawings in this episode were created using the Cisco Spark board. All right, judges, are you ready? I have never been so ready for this. Neither have I. <laughs> Contestants, are you ready? I am so scared right now. <laughs> I'm almost peeing my pants. <laughs> All right, on your mark, get set, go. Okay. I think it's a um, very interesting use case that uh, you could sell this bot to uh, any industry that is out there. So once the call flow uh, flow is done, it could be replicated to many other bots. So I think it's a very very good you know challenge for sure. First things first, uh, the requirement looks like you know we need to create a bot, and it need to look up uh, inventory. So um, three databases are required. So I kind of call it out here as user da database, ordering database, and then inventory database. Right. So um, all that is REST capable, assuming that we can tie into it. Um, the user needs to be able to one-on-one -on -one message the bot and look at inventory. So that's the basic requirement. So, um, so the bot command list. So first, I built a, li a help so that help will list the user all the commands that you could use. So, so if the user types help or at mention the bot and help, I built a tree structure basically outlining the logic. Obviously, list with a Part number or description is obviously the first command. Um, and there are additional logic coming behind it. But uh, let me see here. OK. Obviously, show command is obviously the next one to show um, a cart once an item has been added. Um, another item is the order command with the order cart, right? All these are at mention, and then these options afterwards. Um, then for the supervisors, there is an accept cart, but you gotta put in a, something to identify the user, right? So I use email of the user as the criteria to find which user's cart I should approve. And then decline cart email of the user, right? And optionally a reason. So, so this is kind of the basic help criteria that I kind of came up with. 
Uh, I think it's a good challenge. Um, there's a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of steps here. I think uh, there's a lot of options, a lot of ways to go. So I think it's a good challenge, and uh, it'll be very interesting. So step one, database. Step two, we're going to handle the result count. So zero, we're just going to say nothing found. Response. So basically, I couldn't find anything matching that. Um, and then let's see here. Yeah, so here we've got greater than one. And in that case, what we're going to do is display a list. So here we are going to iterate the results. Um, basically with a number, so one, two, three, etc. And then the user will select what one they're looking for. So the user enters number. As, as you are building out this, um, if somebody says, all right, I, I've got something, I want to add it to my cart, where's that cart being stored? So the cart is stored under a, 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 a variable inside the code. Whenever the user is basically executing a command, we can always create a, a temporary space for that user that associates the user's email. Um, the cart basically is nothing more than an array because all I need is a bunch of strings to be stored there, right? So uh, I'm thinking that um, a user will have a, an array of arrays, a two-dimensional array with all these details stored. So all I'm doing is and keep how long storing. Does that, if you're storing it in the array in the code, how long does that um, array stay active? So if somebody starts in the morning and they come back, they get interrupted, they've got a cart. It's all tied to the email, outside. right? So every, everything is indexed or associated to the email address of the user. So technically, that cart can stay forever until you, you go back. So there's a create uh, cart process and a delete cart process and an update cart process. So all these functions are sub-functions of the flow that I call in. So when it is ordered, at the very end, it's going to come back and do the cleanup because you don't want to waste memory or storage space. Um, so but to answer your question, the, the array should be associated with the user's name, email, um, part to be ordered, etc. But it's basically a two-dimensional array in a, in, a, in, a, in a sense, or a JSON array, basically. In terms of the search results, you'll actually refer back to the original inventory table to check those details. Correct. Okay. Correct. This is just basically a pointer, is what I'm what okay. I'm saving saving here. So, and then when we come back in here, uh, and then there needs to be a um, uh, um, what do I call this? So when I'm when I'm itemizing these one two three four five whatever I I also need to store that here so that'd be my selection number I guess Wow we're gonna abbreviate that that is cell num is what that's supposed to be there um, so then when we come here. What we're going to do is query this table. That was weird. Um, so this is going to be based on, uh, again, my room, my user ID, and what number was entered. So this would be uh, room ID user ID cell num and then my relational query here will give me back this list of ID numbers. Now I need to create a one is to one room with that supervisor and I send a spark message to the supervisor with the parts, the list, the quantity and 
and again, where, where are you getting those values from that you're... So obviously, having? all this data was... The moment you do a list command, obviously the things that are stored are the user's email. This is again that memory bot store, whatever mm -hmm. that storage uh, memory uh, array is. Uh, the item that they you know, put to cart and then let's say they want a quantity of one or two maybe, there may be even three. So that data is stored in that array and so that's always accessible. So we are taking that and posting as a message into the Spark Room. Um, so this guy gets to say yes or no by doing the cart approve or cart reject command, right? So they do have to specify the email because there could be multiple users that could send cards to them. So email is parameter number one. And then this has an email and a response message as for the rejection message. So when that happens, I send a message back to the user saying it was rejected for so and so reason, blah, blah, blah. This sends back to, well, WaterDB, right? This query again to get um, quantity, part number, stuff like that. And that gets posted, so that was one, two, two. Um, that's with his supervisor. Then the message gets created. Three, post message basically like an approve or deny message so that'll post a message into that new room saying do you approve or deny this order and then from there we would have another flow based on approve or deny that will <laughs> uh, all right holy cow all right guys so we have finished our our first spark api whiteboarding challenge uh you guys both did really well it was very close amy and i had a tough decision and we almost got to the point where it was a tie we were we were deliberating and we had to look at a bunch of things and, and determine. Um, each of you kind of brought things to the table that I, I think um, if you combined your solutions would have actually been really awesome. <laughs> um, so the winner of this challenge is Josh. Congratulations, Josh. Thank you. I'm surprised. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Let's say I want two quantities of uh, uh, chicken and two quantities of um, fries or whatever. Tiaras and, and sweaters. <laughs> oh, sorry. You know, I, I didn't pay attention to what exactly they... <laughs> yeah. Uh, honestly, at the first glance, one of my biggest concerns is space on the whiteboard. So we'll, we'll, we'll see. There, there are several things in here. So but I think it'll be good.